Hey, horse friends, I'm Becca Salamone, and you're watching American Horse Talk Live. I'm so super excited to have a special guest on with me today, all the way from Germany. But she hails from Texas, from Weatherford, Texas, just outside uh, Fort Worth. So um, she's she's an American, and she's uh, she's you know glad to be talking about American Horse Talk stuff. Uh, we haven't gone global yet, yet. Okay. <laughs> and so uh, her name is Caitlin Van Hooser. How you doing, Caitlin? I'm doing great, and you know, I'm so excited to see you today, and you look so pretty. Oh, thanks. <laughs> I put on makeup for this. Yeah, um, I did too, but you can't ever tell. <laughs> so um, anyway, we wanted to get you on here because you're over in Germany for the month of September, and you are training with a world-renowned dressage trainer, Hans Biss, and his family, and uh, you're learning lots of things that you want to share with us. So tell us a little bit, you know, before we get into that, about your history with horses, how long you've been doing this, how you got into dressage and stuff like that. So I've been riding um, since I could sit on a horse. My grandparents had Van Hooser Arabians. Uh, they started that in the 1970s and they slowly transitioned it to Van Hooser Farm. And um, so I grew up riding there. And then in high school, I found dressage. My first trainer was Deirdre Sabo uh, down in Belton. And because of her, I actually met Hans. Um, anyway, so I, once I graduated college with my equine science degree, I was able to go to Weatherford and go to the farm and kind of take over the reins of the farm, so to speak. Yeah. And take over the training and the lesson program. And my grandmother still is in charge of the boarding program and the, the overall running of the farm. Okay. Um, now, you, you mentioned um, equine degree. You went to Judson, is that right? Yes. At Judson College in Marion, Alabama. Yeah, you want to say hey to anybody? Hey Jennifer. Hey Janice. Yeah. Hey Pam. Hope everybody's doing well. Yeah, I figured you say hey to Jennifer Hoggle. She's a friend of mine. <laughs> so, so um, you've been doing this for a while. And how old are you? I'm 24. 24. And you're taking over your your grandparents' farm. Yes. And so, so you want to come and get some special skills that you can take back to your students, right? So I've been teaching and training there. I've been able to call myself a professional for the past three years. Um, and so I've been teaching uh, students, kids, and adults, and running the training program, training horses there. And I've, I've been training and teaching English, Western, and dressage, but it has been my plan all along to eventually transition to only dressage um, because that is my passion. Mm -hmm. And so uh, through Deirdre, I was able to go to a clinic and ride with Hans, and that's how all of this happened. Okay, awesome. So tell us a little, and you know, I've been reading your blog. You, you've got a blog. Tell, tell me about the blog real quick, and then I'll ask you some questions. So the blog is vanhooserdressage.com, and I really started it as a way to, number one, write down things for myself and be able to look back, but also to be able to share with all my friends and family back home that are asking what I'm doing and what I'm learning and just a great way to broadcast everything. Yeah, definitely. So how many posts do you have about your experience over there? I want to make sure I read them all. <laughs> um, I want to say maybe 15. Okay. Maybe not even that many. It's hard to, to, I have limited free time and when I have free time, you know, I make yeah. sure sleep or eat or write down notes from my lessons. And so it's hard to get it on the yeah, computer. And on definitely. I understand. All right. So, so let's go back to, you know, your whole journey there. So you decided to go and they accepted you to go. They said not just two lessons, but four weeks. Yes. And you, yeah, you, so I, I asked Hans if I could come over and have a couple of lessons. Uh, I was planning to come over to Europe anyway this fall. And so I asked him, I said, Hey, if I, if I come over, can I come have, you know, one or two lessons with you? And he said, well, um, are you willing to work? And I said, Oh yes, absolutely. Because I have always been a working student. I have always worked for my lessons instead of, um, paying cash or whatever. And I feel that I gain more out of my lessons because I have a more, I have a higher appreciation for them because of how hard I worked for them. And so I told him I would be able to work. I'd be willing. And he said, okay, well, then you can come for four weeks. And okay, <laughs> wow. Yes, sir, I'll be there. Yeah. When, when do you want me? <laughs> it worked out perfectly because uh, for the month of September, it's been super duper rainy in Texas. And I wouldn't have been able to teach or ride anyway. I don't have an indoor arena there. And so uh, it's worked out perfectly that I'm able to make 
good use of my my time. Yeah, definitely. Now, now uh, you have your horse there at home, but you did not bring it, right? No, I did not bring. Her. Why? <laughs> it would have cost a lot of money, and it is. I feel like it is a better experience to focus on training myself, and so that I can go home and train all of my horses and all of my riders instead of trying to focus on this one specific horse. Yeah. Okay, so kind of go, you know, day in the life there. What do you do for them? Yeah, so I, uh, my day starts, well, I have to be in the barn at seven in the morning and I, you know, I get up around six, so I have time to make coffee and catch up on the day, uh, catch up on American news. So I have to be in the barn around seven and I help feed the horses. Um, thankfully, I've gotten it down to the point where if they're late getting into the barn, I can already, you know, be uh, feeding horses and getting the ball ball rolling because horses don't like to wait for breakfast. I'm no, sure you know <laughs> they <that>. don't. <laughs> They're uh, kind of demanding so, that way. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, from seven on, uh, we're feeding horses, turning them out, cleaning stalls. The groom usually shows up around eight. And so we start getting horses groomed and saddled uh, for the, the trainers that are training here. And then I'll have a lesson in the morning, usually, and then I'm able to have a lesson or um, just a, a ride by myself in the afternoon where I can focus on what I learned in the morning and try to um, try to cement those new brain pathways, you know, because I'm, yeah, I'm, re, I'm relearning some things, but I'm also making myself better in some areas. Yeah. So were they or are they impressed with your riding? No. <laughs> Well, I don't know. Now they're happier now that I've gotten better and I'm getting more consistent in how they want to see me ride. But you know, there's a reason he let me come over. <laughs> That's hilarious. All right. So I'm going to um, ask you some things that I was reading about in there. I got to look at my notes here. Um, differences, you know, between um, U.S. And, and German horse people. OK, so. Um, they're, they're off days on Monday. Talk about that a little bit. Yeah, so a lot of shows and clinics and um, industry events happen over the weekend. And so if you take Sunday off or if you don't train your horses on, on Sunday, um, then you might miss some of the shows and um, some of the clients. And a lot of clients are also only available on the weekends. And so um, that it's helpful for them to be able to train and teach on Sundays. And then Monday, um, it's kind of nice because the rest of the world is open and you can go run your errands and do everything. Um, but I do miss having that, that day of rest, that Sabbath and being able to go to church with my grandparents. So I don't think that's something I'm going to implement when I get back home, yeah. even though it is common in the U S. Yeah. Now, um, you mentioned, I think a couple of times about braiding manes and tails. What's the difference there? Um, oh, I've noticed that, so in the U.S., a fair amount of people braid their own manes um, for shows, but um, also a fair amount choose to hire somebody. I mean, I choose to hire somebody at shows, and I pay her to mm -hmm. ensure that my braids are going to stay in the whole show. Um, here, I've seen everybody that has shown they have braided uh, the manes themselves. And in dressage, unlike jumping, uh, we just braid the mane and not the tail because braiding the tail can interfere with the tailbone and the tightness of the back. And dressage is really based around having a loose and a supple back that's relaxed and can support the rest of the horse. Okay. All right. Now, uh, you also mentioned supplements. I, you know, I'm not sure exactly. I don't remember what you said about that, but <laughs> you said maybe they didn't use them as, as much as we do. Uh, is that right? Suppleness, yeah. So suppleness is more um, a, a verb for how you want your horse to move. You want your horse to move relaxed through his entire body, but not relaxed to the point where it's like a sack of flour, a sack of potatoes. You want uh, positive tension throughout your horse, but you want a horse that is relaxed and willing to move off of your legs and your reins. Okay. All right. Then I completely misunderstood that. Sorry. <laughs> like I told you before we started, I am not a uh, English person. So th some of these questions may be ridiculous to the English people listening. Sorry about that, guys. <laughs> it's a whole, it's a whole new language. It is. I feel like I'm, I'm learning a new language. Um, 
All right, now talk about seat lessons because that, that was the first time I'd heard that term. Seat lessons. So you're familiar with lunging, where a yeah. person stands in the middle and the horse goes around on a long rope. Um, and so that's what a seat lesson is, is there's a rider on the horse that is being lunged. And the, the lunging is not for the horse in this case, it is for the rider so that um, I can focus on not having to steer the horse or not having to worry about where the horse is going um, or how fast he is moving. Although I do in my seat lessons here have to focus on keeping a consistent rhythm of the horse without my reins, just using my legs or my, my seat. Um, and you can, so you, you can use seat lessons to work on, to work on anything, to work on posture, to work on leg control, to work on balance. It is something that I implement with my, um, with any students at home, but especially my beginner kiddos, they, everybody starts out on the lunge line before they get to go ride by themselves. Yeah, definitely. So it's kind of, I'm imagining it's kind of like vaulting. Yes. Yeah, exactly. That's a good okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, cool. Um, let's see. Uh, you mentioned that you had improved your circles. What, what does circles mean to dressage people? So the standard dressage arena is 20 meters by 60 meters. And uh, that's 20 meters wide. <clears throat> and so your circle has to be, you know, has a diameter of 60 meters, or I mean of 20 meters. And so <clears throat> if one side, you know, is 10 meters or 15 meters or the other side's 20. It's not a circle. It's a, a very artistic interpretation of a circle. And that is something that I was very frustrated about, that my circles were not perfect from day one. But the, the family here helped me feel a little bit better because they, they have been teaching clinics in the States for 20, 25 years, and they are still working on circles <laughs> with Americans. Okay. Um, before before I ask you anything else, I just want to acknowledge that we got some viewers on here, and uh, we got Caroline Mitchell Vaughn. Hey, Caroline, <laughs> do you know her? Actually, is helping keep my animals uh, okay legged up and groomed, and then um, with the help of Christy, they're they're keeping the farm running. Okay, good. And then uh, Cheryl Loafing, do you know her? I sure no. She she actually won um, one of the copies of the the books that Kara Whitney wrote, uh, Larry the Cable Guy's Wife. That was our last interview. So, hey, Cheryl. <laughs> and then Greg Roberts, um, he's got, um, he met, he's a singer and he's got this, uh, I guess it's a rap or hip hop song, Three Up, One Down for the Racking Horse People. Oh, nice. Yeah, it's really cool. You got to listen to it. I will have to check that out. Yeah. And ho hopefully he's going to help me with my song for American Horse Talk Live. Wink, oh. wink, yeah. <laughs> Greg. Yeah. And my husband Frank's on there too. All right, and um, so a couple of other people. Now, you mentioned that this is nothing to do with horses, but it's something near and dear to my heart because you know I speak French and I lived in France for a while, and we always had Nutella crepes off the street. And you mentioned a waffle on a stick. So tell us what a waffle on a stick is. It was so good. It was at this horse show we went to, um, and it was shaped like a heart, and it was better than a waffle actually I wasn't I was expecting the typical waffle consistency um but this had a more cake-like texture on the inside and it was kind of dense and it was covered in powdered sugar of course and it went perfect with the coffee and it was just a great little afternoon pick-me-up cool and do you know Stephen uh Evely or Evely yes okay he's he's saying hey he said hey Van Hooser <laughs> <laughs> he runs a fox hunting barn in Alabama that I okay. worked at when I was in college and uh, working at that fox hunting barn was a really, really fun experience. Okay. Yeah. Now, listen, let me ask you something. When I'm putting these comments up on the screen, can you see that or is it too tiny to read? Oh, you can yes, see it? Can. Okay. All right. Good. All right. My next question is you mentioned horse stores, H-O-R-Z-E. Yeah. So actually, since I wrote that blog post, I have been more educated. So horse is a brand. Um, that is pretty common in the U.S. You can buy it online. Mm -hmm. And I thought that these stores were horse stores, but they're not. They are uh, run and owned by a different company. But their main brand is the horse brand. And I've only bought that brand online. Um, and so it was kind of cool to buy them in the store. And actually, my phone is sitting on a stack of saddle pads that are from that tax store. <laughs> 
<laughs> okay, uh, let's see. You you mentioned the braiding. So, okay, here's another thing I noted in your blog. You were talking about the music. Um, and then yeah, I think this is when, the, yeah, when they come in to get their prizes. And you mentioned the Looney Tunes song. What was that all about? <laughs> so, uh, at every single show here, after the class has been placed and pinned, the winners come in and they're in their show outfit. Their horses are still braided and everybody's very beautifully and sharply turned out. And um, a fun little tune is played while the ribbons are put on the horses and then all the horses canter or trot around the arena. And it's it can get pretty entertaining sometimes because horses aren't always used to you know, the energetic music and the crowd is pretty energetic and alive. And so things can get a little feisty sometimes with that. Award. Okay. Yeah, it sounds fun. Now, um, I, I guess that's all the questions I had about your blog uh, post. And y'all can go to um, see that. I'll show that to you right now. Where is that? Um, you can get more information by going to her blog. There it is. Sorry, I, I got lost there in my buttons. I got lots of buttons that y'all can't see when you're on the other side. Um, can you share or relate a either a scary, funny, or some kind of memorable moment in your horse life so far? Oh man, <laughs> that's a tough one, isn't it? There's it's too lot. it's too broad. <laughs> There's a lot of funny. Oh, here's a good one. So when I was younger, um, I lived with my family smack in the middle of Waco, <laughs> <laughs> and I had a miniature horse. Yeah, and I had to get permission from the city of Waco. I had to go before the Animal Grievance Board, you know, little 12-year-old me, and go ask them for permission to have this miniature horse in, in our backyard, which we had a, we had an acre of land, which in the city is quite a bit of land, but we were about 25 yards short. And so I had to have uh, permission to have Turbo. Anyway, so I got the permission, and Turbo hangs out in the backyard, and my mom came home one day uh, in the station, the Volvo station wagon, came home from the grocery store, and she opened the hatch, and there were the groceries, and Turbo, ever the little pony, had to go investigate, and next thing we know, he is sneaking apples out of the back of the car and taking <laughs> off with them. Oh, gosh. Yeah, you know, I, my big story that I always recount to people, and they're probably sick of hearing it by now, is I had a little uh, Shetland pony when I was little. I was five years old. And, you know, she was the best thing. Her name was Angel. She was an angel. She won every time she stepped into the show pen. I mean, she won first place. And I took her everywhere. She was my best friend. Took her to the shows. You know, even when I was riding the larger horses, I'd take my pony and ride her around afterwards. <laughs> and so one day um, I was riding around the farm and I was hungry and I wanted to watch some TV. So we went in the front door and walked to the kitchen and sat down with a snack and watched TV for a while. And then we went out the back screen door. <laughs> of course, I guess my parents weren't home because they didn't make me stop. But when they found out, they said, Becca, don't bring the horse in the house. <laughs> oh, funny. Yeah, I have a photo of the day I brought Turbo into the kitchen and both my parents are standing there like, really? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I guess I'm lucky at the time that nothing happened. <laughs> uh, now I'm going to flash up here on the screen real quick. Um, I have been nominated or American horse talk has been nominated for best talk show. And I want to ask all of my horse friends to vote for it. Um, you'll see it on Facebook. You'll see the form where you go. This is not the actual form. It's just, you know, a graphic, uh, but we are up against John Tesh. He's got 1.2 million followers. So help us out and share it to all your horse friends all That's over the country. You. Yeah. And can you imagine if a horse talk show won best talk show? It'd be so awesome. So that's my, that's my plug for me. I never plug me. I'm always plugging other people. So somebody vote for me. <laughs> okay. All right. No, that, that's enough about me. Let's go back to Hans Biss. Talk about him and his family and, um, you know, just what his background is and what it means to be working with him. Yeah. So Hans, um, Hans is an incredible trainer, an incredible instructor. He has been doing this for a long time. Um, he has been judging dressage and jumping for a really long time here in Illinois. And some of the horses he has trained have gone on to compete in the Olympics and the World Equestrian Games. 
And one of the reasons he did not ride the horse in the Olympics that he trained, you know, he had to have somebody else ride it, was uh, because at the time, the way German riding rules were set up, he was actually too qualified to ride. They really? didn't want um, so such a professional emphasis on the riding. They wanted to showcase more amateurs, from my understanding. And so he had to find somebody that was a little bit less qualified to ride yeah. the horse. Yeah. Wow. So I guess it's such a huge honor to, to even be there then. Yeah. It, it's incredible to be here and learning and soaking up things. I, uh, I was hit by how amazing and thankful I am as I was taking a horse out this evening and adjusting my stirrups and getting ready to get on just there was nobody else out there. I was waiting for Jan to come out and teach me. And the arena is gorgeous, covered by trees. And I just stopped. I was so thankful to be here riding in Germany and learning. And even in my most difficult and frustrating moments, you know, they're here in Germany riding with Hans. It's, it's yeah. pretty great. That's awesome. So um, I wanted to ask you, you know, we talked about the differences between the U.S. and Germany. Um but how in general do you see this sport developing over the next, say, five or 10 years? And what would you like to see happen? Well, the U.S. already has a huge, huge dressage industry. Um, you know, the United States Dressage Federation has been a huge driving force in that. Um, I would like to see the U.S. be able to be more internationally competitive. And I mean, I'm not one to speak. I'm not an internationally competitive rider at all. Uh, but out of the top 10 uh, best dressage national or internationally ranked dressage riders in the world, there are five German riders and one American rider. Yeah. And whether I am the one to change that or not, I would like to see, you know, the amount of American riders in the top 10 FBI riders. I'd like to see that increase. Yeah, that's a good goal. Like yeah. that. So um, did you get a chance to watch the World Equestrian Games? Yes. Well... I was able to watch some of them live, um, but this is the first year that this <clears throat> that this family has not either attended the games or competed in the games. Really, and so they were uh, very interested to to hear about the results or talk about the results over dinner. And so, you know, I was able to stay up to date um, alone, but also talk to them, and they were able to tell me some of the riders they knew and some of the lines of the horses and oh that horse's sire was born just down the road from here and that's neat it's been a very cool experience yeah a good time to be there then right yeah, no kidding yeah now um i didn't think about this before but do you speak german no nope. okay so how are you getting along with that are they speaking english to you yes they are speaking english i'm trying to pick up um what german i can the the education system here is set up so that a lot of the kids and adults have a pretty um, basic uh, minimum uh, grasp of the English language. So it's pretty easy to communicate. Um, and then um, listening to other lessons, especially the kids' lessons and even the adult lessons, and watching them train and hearing them train other writers, I'm able to pick up on certain German words, and that's been, that's been a help. Um, the first... The first German word I learned here was parada, uh, which means half halt, which for the people that don't, that aren't familiar with dressage, half halt is the concept of asking the horse, let me back up. When you ask a horse to stop, you know, you want the horse ideally to stop with its back legs first and sit back on his haunches and right. just go sliding onto the forehand, sliding onto the front legs. And so a half halt is just that. You take the energy of the horse and you ask him, to shift it back to his haunches and, and lift up his rib cage a little bit, but still continue to go forward. And I know you know all about that as a physics teacher. <laughs> so uh, a half haul is, is a huge, huge concept in dressage. And so you want to do it um, before and after you do anything, any movement that you ask the horse to do. And so I'm constantly hearing the word parada, parada, parada. And the, the full word for half halt is longer than parada, uh, but that is what is easiest to get out, right. you know, in three okay. seconds. Yeah, well, I'm glad you explained that because, you know, as, as I was reading the blog, I was seeing all these terms that I didn't know what they really were. And I've heard that my whole 
life, the half halt and half pass and all these half things. And I'm like, what are these terms? <laughs> so, uh, you know, half halt to me sounds like, are you really going to stop? Are we stopping? Or are we not stopping? Yeah. So. <laughs> Yeah, it's stopping, but let's keep that energy moving forward in a in a better, more round shape. Yeah. So thank you for explaining that to little old me. <laughs> All right. So um, let's see. I want to ask you about other resources you can recommend for people who might be interested in getting into dressage. Yeah. So any I, the first thing is finding a dressage trainer, a dressage barn near you, and go see if you can watch them. Go see if you can watch the horses and riders move. Because that is truly what is so breathtaking. It's just sitting there and watching the horse and rider move together. Um, and then if you want to learn more, you can uh, visit the United States Dressage Federation's website. And that will give you a good um, a good resource for finding trainers near you. I saw Anna just commented. Yeah. She's a porter at my farm. <clears throat> her okay. thoroughbred uh, red is actually in training with me uh he's for sale too okay he's doing dressage <laughs> and jumping and i am ready to go home and improve him even more yeah and van, van hooser farm put a horse that is caroline so caroline runs the social media page uh most of them for the van hooser farm um entity and she has been a huge help in supporting me and encouraging me and pushing me I'm very grateful for her. That's awesome. Well, have we shared everything that you want to talk about? Or is there anything else you want to share? I think that's about it. We touched on the farm and how grateful I am for my grandparents and that I can continue the legacy that they started. And I really miss them and I know they miss me. So I'm excited to go home and see them and get back to the farm and improving my horses even more. Yeah. So when do you go back? Uh, I am leaving. Today's Thursday. I'm leaving. I'm leaving this barn Monday, and I leave <coughs> Germany. On and, and when? Uh, Sorry. Germany on Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so we just caught you right at the very end. Yes. How fortunate we could work this out. Yeah, I'm really happy. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Caitlin. We appreciate it. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. It was great talking. All right. To you, yeah, you too. I've enjoyed getting to know you. And, and guys, for you know the people that are watching, we appreciate you watching. We appreciate our replay viewers. I know a lot of people can't watch this uh, during the day. They watch it at night. So that's where we get all of our, our views. <laughs> and uh, if you would, just go to the American Horse Talk page on Facebook. Like that page so you can get our updates. And join the American Horse Talk group so you can talk horse with us over there. And um, you know share everything that you have, your pictures and your, your videos about your horses. I, you know, I ask a lot of people all the time to share on that page. I think people are reluctant to, but please share, share, share. Cause now what we want to do now that I know that's your goal, I will definitely contribute. Yeah, definitely. Okay, good. All right. Well, thank you for joining us again and guys, we'll see you online. Bye Caitlin. <laughs>